This is my brand new 13 foot custom wrapped IRW blank. Is with a Fuji C, complete with Elkanite guides. 13 feet long. It's black with white accents, purple threading. This is going to be great for my uh, long distance whipping to light plugging and to light surf casting. Uh, to me, this is a thing of beauty. My first custom wrap rod. Absolutely love it. Okay, on my 13.3 IRW, I use my Otegra 5500. This is a great, great reel. Comes with your spacers. Also comes with extra spools. So you can vary if you want to use um, braid, mono. Take a look at that. This one here, I got some extra braid on. My other, my main one, I, my main spool, I do have braid on it, but I also have a backup. This is heavier. This one's 80, and the other one is 50. So th it comes with some awesome extras. This is my number one short casting uh, spinners, Otegras, Shimano Otegras. Okay, YouTubers, my second choice is basically do not use the rub line. The rub line is only used when we're going for GTs because of the scoots on the side. Okay, so, and that's for the really big, big fish we use this for. And most places don't have big fish like that. So I would say 95% of the time, I would go with a general setup. The general setup is take away this part here the rub line and take away the heavy duty swivel i would go directly from the main line to here okay main line to a smaller three-way swivel which is this style i prefer this style because like i said if you use this part here these have metal rivets and i, I can't believe that a baby hammerhead can pop those things off so please like i said use this style over here all right, so when you when you go with the more all-purpose system, everything else is fine. Just get rid of the heavy-duty swivel here. Main line goes direct to the three-way swivel here. Everything else plays exactly the same. Now, what we're going to do that's a little bit different today is we're adding on another leader on the top. And the reason why we do that is because the place we're going to is infested with a lot of crabs. Crabs... Even if you use bait bags, um, you tie it on, the baits onto the hooks, the crabs would tear the baits apart, all right? You're gonna lose a lot of bait that way. You spend a lot of money because you gotta keep replacing the bait all the time. So what I found is that I'm still gonna go with the hook that's connected to the rig itself, okay? I'm gonna put my bait over here. But what I'm also gonna do is this, I'm gonna add on a second rig. And to do that, you know, I. I use a dropper loop in my videos I'm going to quickly show how to make a dropper loop so you can run that through the, the eyelet of the uh, swivel right here and this can be six to eight inches of line your, your choice of line or preferably longer like maybe 10 or 12 inches so your line will go up here to a cork the cork I'm using can be three quarter inch one inch depends on the weight of the bait you're using a bigger bait maybe go uh, a one inch round or if you're using a smaller bait maybe a three quarter inch round but I found that three quarter inch all the way around works pretty good for a piece of squid um, shrimp and and the reason why you do this is because you want to this rig here it would be floating the cork will, will suspend this so it's going to be 
above the bottom. The crabs will not be able to reach this. Now certain species are swimming crabs and they may swim up to it, but most crabs won't do that because they expose themselves to pre um, predators around and they mostly they will not do that. Um, I guess if they're really hungry, they could. But the reason why I make it like this is because if you go with this system here on an, on an average day, like say the chocolate beach, which is full of crabs there, um, you gotta keep changing the baits. With this system here, maybe you change, the, instead of changing the bait every 40 minutes, now you change the bait for every two hours because the tiny, tiny little fish or the microorganisms in the water will generally work its way in and eat up that bait, but it'll take a little bit longer. So with this system here, uh, I'm gonna be highlighting this in the video, you can throw out your normal line with your bait here, with the secondary bait here, that could be maybe two feet above the reef, one and a half, two feet above the reef. So when this one is finally eaten, you still got this one working for you. So I prefer this system. I mean, you could have a tandem set up here, but what's the sense of having two baits on the bottom if the, if the crabs or other predators are gonna eat that bait? You have, a, you have a secondary bait up here that's gonna be working for you once this one is gone. So we're gonna, this is, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this. And if we catch something great, if not, it's okay, because I just wanna show you how to make this. Thank you. Okay, on the three-way swivel, I use a uh, Palomar to attach it to the main line. So this is a three out with the two out. So on this dangling smaller one, we're gonna use our looper. We're gonna put the uh, leader on that one. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna put a three ounce on my IRW. Um, this is a flat, so it digs into the muddy sand. So I kind of look at where I'm going to throw it, and then it's going to tell me what type of uh, leader I'm going to use, the length. It also tells me um, what I need to put on for a weight. Okay. The flats work pretty good in sand and mud flats. See, again, with the dropper loop, easy on, easy off. Like I said, keep everything simple okay I'm back at chocolate beach at sunrise so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make up my leader I'm gonna use 50 pound test mono I find that I have a fairly good success rate with the 50 pound mono okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a Palomar. Yeah, everybody knows how to make a Palomar. Well, most people do. If you don't, check out one of my vids. It's going to show you how. A lot of other people will put out vids on how, how to do this also. If you tie the knot correctly, it won't break at the knot. It may, the line may get scuffed and it may break along the line, but if you tie it correctly, it won't break at the knot. Well, it shouldn't break at the knot. Let's put it that way, right? You notice I used the handle to tighten it. It's a lot better than using your fingers and have it slipped and then you have to go to the hospital afterwards. That's not cool. Cut off the excess. Okay, today I'm gonna to be using a float, a cork float on this. Oh, okay, you can. I was thinking maybe, nah, not today. So you just get the cork float and you and you put it in through like that. This will keep the bait suspended off the bottom, but I'm not gonna do that today. Okay, I'm just gonna make a simple dropper loop here so I'm gonna go through oh 
fish are busting there. Something's chasing him. I'm gonna go through once, twice, and I and I leave enough of an opening here to get my bait going through this when when I hook it through. But that's basically what I do. I try to do things the easiest possible, and that's how my lead is gonna look like for today. Okay, today's choice of bait. We got a, I got some squid from a year ago. So you notice they're pink instead of white. I call them stinky pinks. Stinky pinks work. So we're gonna take a strip off, cut it up. Got the head here. Save that. The, the cartilage with the guts here feed the crabs okay now see you can just use your thumbnail or fingernail see take a look at it take off the skin I mean a lot of, there's a lot of pros on pros and cons in this and leave the skin on take it off but I feel that the reflectiveness off the white bait especially in dirty waters like this does help Okay, so we're going to cut ourselves a strip. Oh, wow, the fish are busting over there. I got to hurry up. Okay, put the rest back. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get some dental floss here. Ooh, my fingers smell good, don't they? Gonna probably track some mongooses again today. So what we're gonna do is... Ah, boy, it's hard to work when your fingers are slimy. I always keep a water bottle quick clean as well as um, spraying down my gear afterwards use some of my dental floss put this to the eye of the hook like so okay I give one two granny wraps I'm going to use dental floss rather than um, Miracle Thread because I want it to hold and I want it to be a little bit tougher. Okay. So, here's our stinkles here. What we're going to do, I'm going to, dump, I'm going to double this up. See, fold it in two. Put it to one time. Put it through two times. Bring it up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to bury the uh, top one over the eye of the hook, like so. And then once twice two or three times good enough do one more and this will cinch it in like so Nicely cinched in. Yeah, see what I put my scissors, my kitchen shears, I should say. Always great to have a pair of kitchen shears. Save all my clippings. See, that's the way it's gonna look. 
key. I guess we'll put it to one more time. There. That's the way a squid's going to look. Go back to our three-way swivel. And, of course, I put the dropper loop in here. See, look at that. Look how easy it is to put that thing on. It's also easy to take it off. This is a, a, a multi-purpose rig. I wouldn't recommend this for big things like large sharks or uh, bigger GTs, but it has held them. That's it, that's ready to go. Look at that, that's sardines being chased by something down there. So we're gonna chuck this very close to where they are at, okay? Well, in that case, put it pretty much where it is at. All right. Put it into my sand spike I already had set up in between the boards. I got it um, tightening in with some bungees. Got my safety cord. Put the safety cord on. Got my bell. Put that into the bell holder. Uh, you want to make sure that the uh, the tip is fairly taut like that because it's going to show the nibbles in case there's bait stealers around and you want to bring it in just a little bit. That's it already.